If you've always wanted to support the show with your hard-earned cash, now's the time to pause, go to Patreon, and search out F and Rad. Join one of our tiers. You'll get ad-free episodes every week, one day early, plus more cool stuff. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand, 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. Rip Curl Outerwear, strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. New Greens, 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and RAD at checkout for 20% off. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, best selection, best prices. Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. The Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code F and RAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Haven's a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code F and RAD at checkout to save 10% of their Come Alive program. I just got back from Snowboy's Holy Bowly event at Sunshine Village. I'm hanging on to winter, and Bowly delivered the goods. Fresh snow every day. Crush is still building the most beautiful and creative stuff in the world, and the vibe is all time. Event builders and park designers are key to my enjoyment of snowboarding. Without them, resorts become a collection of dangerous side hits with deep highways and uphill landings. I want to keep our community fresh and safe, and one of the best ways to do that is to attend the events built by passionate snowboarders and make sure our home resorts pay park designers and builders a fair wage. If you attend mountain meetings, be sure to remind them that park staff are key to the whole experience. Thanks to people like Liam at Cyprus, Marcus at Grouse, and Chris at Seymour, Vancouver has a healthy scene. My deepest thanks to everyone involved. This week's guest is Don Bostick. He's a skater from Sacramento who started in the 70s and has put on more events than the next 20 event managers combined. Known as the godfather of the N-Men, Don's life in skateboarding and snowboarding has been absolutely legendary. If you haven't seen the N-Men documentary, make a note and watch it right away. He helped create the competitive snowboard scene in California, eventually developing the X Games. I met him at the Legends of Tahoe event, where he and a handful of others honor the history of snowboarding at Tahoe. It was a great honor to have Don Bostick as a guest of the show. You know, and I quit college to join a band, which I thought, I, actually, at the time, my goal was to be a rock star. Killer. And, and I was a drummer, and I won you know, that was my life and that's what I lived for. And outside of that, surfing and skating was always my passion. And I, I say that I started, I didn't start skiing until what I call late was, I was 21 and I lived in Sacramento. And I had moved to Sacramento from the Bay Area to be in this certain band that was on the verge of being a big, something big, whatever. What, what were they called? Uh, Slow Lores. Slow Lores. It was a seven-piece jazz rock band, and we Sick. actually worked with, uh, we had a producer, the drummer, Mike Botts, who was a drummer for the group Bread. Rad. Baby, I'ma want you, baby. I'm... So Mike was from Sacramento, and in our band, we had, uh, it was kind of like a Chicago setup. We had trombone, trumpet, sax, and we had this insane jazz keyboard player, uh, and so they had a connection with Mike, 
And anyway, we spent a couple of summers recording. We thought we were going to get on Electra Records and all that kind of stuff. Sure, sure. There were talks. Yeah. There were talks. And so what was kind of cool about my life is that being a musician and traveling all over the place, like I always, people used to say, I drive up my van, I have surfboards, I had skis, you know, I had skateboards. <laughs> and talk about skateboarding, I was in Colorado Springs in the 70s when uh, the urethane wheel just came out. Yep, yep. And I had skated in the 60s when I started skating 10, 11 years old. And so I was always good at doing 360s and handstands and all that. And when the urethane wheel came out, I was in Colorado and this ski shop had a skateboard demo. And nobody could do anything. And I show up. I had a, I think I had a Bane skateboard. I start spinning 360s. Next thing I know, I'm doing the demo. <laughs> I love it. That's you know? awesome. So and that uh, urethane wheel company was that Cryptonics? Was no, it, no. Cri before Cri Crypto Cadillac. Before Cadillac. Cadillac, the big Cadillac thing. wheels. Yeah. Right. Cadillac, Cadillac wheels. wheels. Yeah. And the crypto story yeah. um, puts it into Colorado too. Like yeah, that's where. Yeah. That's uh, where Colorado just went uh, nuts. Was that Dave? Oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, that's a deep pull. That's a very deep pull. Um, but, you know, I, even thinking when, when I think of Kryptonic, you know, I I could see the wheels. I could feel. I, I know what those <laughs> yeah. wheels are like. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I I had I had a board that came with a pair of Sims or a set of Sims Fat Cats, and I'm like, I started skating probably eighty four, five, six around Bones Brigade. You know, uh, public domain. Yeah. So that's my era. Um, but those Sims wheels, yeah, there's something really, you know, just about the, it, it wasn't, they weren't a printed wheel. It was an embossed Sims around that. And the branding for me really landed like, oh, cool. These are, this is cool. This shit is cool. Yeah. I mean, branding and coolness was always, it was know, so a part, of, a part it, of it. So for you, what's the first snowboard event that you get, you know, called to organize? Well, as, as far as snowboard event is, uh, I lived in Sacramento, so I actually used to come to Donner all the time, and there was the group around Tahoe that was forming, and at Boreal, they used to have these night sessions, because Boreal uh, always had night skiing, and so there's always a posse going to Boreal, and a guy there named Scooter Scott was the manager, and Scooter's actually the guy that... Uh, got together with a group of us and we started the California State Snowboard Series. Sick. And I'm not sure what year it was, but it was at the same time that in Southern California, Chuck uh, was starting US, uh, USASA. USA? What became USASA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the California Series uh, is the one that Roach won. He, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He was the state champion yeah. at, at your series. So yeah, you so got involved state with that. Series and Steve-O, who was here yesterday, Steve was one of the judges. Yep. You know, so we had a lot of crossover from skate people in Sacto. That's rad. And, and the end men? And the end men. And the other thing, to give you a little history, is that at the time I was managing two stores called Ghost Skate. Ghost Skate, yeah. And Ghost Skate was based, the original store was in Santa Cruz by the Board Rock. Uh, a guy named Dale Smith uh, opened up these shops. And again, I, I got off the road from uh, from music. And I, earlier I opened up what was called Skateboards, et cetera. And I did that to try to have a life outside of music. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you see in the Endman movie is that I opened that shop. I was 26 or 27, you know, never had a business before, but I I, I thought skateboarding, you know, this is something I can do. And totally. I had a 600 square foot little spot and uh, three pinball machines. And, Sick. And after school, my, my place was happening. Yep. Of we course. I had, had ramps outside. Demos outside in the whole thing. I had thing. a quarter pipe to wall. Damn. Know, and all, all, just a lot of cool stuff happening. Yeah, that is dope. But years later, to get back to snowboarding, well, <laughs> I'm jumping all over. I'm sorry. I love it. Don't be sorry. This but even dope. when I had that shop, which is uh, 76 to 78, yeah, I got a Lonnie Toff, Sims. That's my first snowboard. They were really around in the, that, that, that's that when late Lon 70s thing. Yeah, that's when Lonnie came out, and it was a big 
plastic kind of a boat. I've I've held them, man. I've yeah. seen them. I've never ridden them. And so he had a, a lot of you top skateboard deck on it with one bungee cord. Yep. So I that was my first board. So I used to come up here. Of course, snowboarding was completely brand new. The resorts didn't allow it. So I used to, I'd ski at Boreal and then go across from Boreal and hike up on my own. At the time, I didn't know what was happening with Jantry and, and the Tahoe City guys, you know. I didn't know anything. I was on my own. You're just Gilles, doing it on yourself, doing it myself. On your, uh, by yourself with a, on a Lonnie Toff too. Were they those Lonnie things? Toff, would, the problem they with the Lonnie Toff, yeah. if, if you're familiar, yeah. the front of the board would yeah, just bend and yeah. you just eat shit unless it was a total pow day. Yeah, and you're standing right. So on the I back. actually right, right. figured, you know, this thing's not right, and I actually gave it to a lift op that worked at Sugar Bowl that lived up here. I said, "Man, you're up here all the time hiking all this, and you know, I do it once in a while, but." I actually gave it to him, you know. I'm That's not sweet. ever sure what happened to him. Right, right, right. But I thought it needed a better home because, and I I didn't think it was right. And so immediately there was a group of us in Sacramento. We got into mono skiing. Okay, yeah. Where, uh, I could Mike see how Doyle, that would happen. Yep. Mike Doyle, famous server, he developed the mono ski. Yeah, yeah. So I got it. Got into that. I still I, see those once in a while, man. Yeah, I, there's groups that get together. Yep. I used to keep one around. You know, just for fun. The really, sure. the really kick ass. If you knew how to ski, you could mono ski. It was yeah, you could make it go. Well, people and it was better. People for power. didn't like mono skis either. They thought, you, oh you know, man, yeah, that's you're gonna get you're gonna get the Jimmy Scott roller skate hate for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand because Jimmy's here. Uh, great, <laughs> you got to interview Jimmy and the best. The yeah. best. That was so fun. It's nice to bring up that attitude. I know we're going all over the place. But, yeah, no, you know, no. It's but, yeah, because I mean, even within skateboarding, by the time I started, big wheels, small wheels, long board, yeah, short board, so much, everything. Yeah. Everybody's kind of butting heads against each other. Like, oh, you're not that fucking cool. And uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's always had that kind of cool guy cut off. Hey, you're not from Northern California. Fuck off. Get out of here, Southern yeah, California know, guy. But it, it was. Kind of, but, but if you could skate, still... if you could skate, if someone showed up, and even if they pushed Mongo, is which is awful, like okay, but they could skate. It's like that guy can fucking skate. That let yeah, him do I his think thing. The, the whole Mongo thing just got overworked a bit, you know. It's it's actually an indicator of the regulation, you know, the regulators. It's like it became like too like people would would. Freak on you if you push Mongo. Yeah, freak. As a down as a downhiller is actually better if you learn to put to push both ways. Yeah, you want to push you know? both feet. And you need to push yeah, both feet. It's kind of like, why don't you go switch? Why don't you push both ways? Right, and right. Instead of get tapped for being a Mongo. <laughs> it's funny because those gatekeepers and that cool thing goes out the window. In, in the community of friends, you know what I mean? And and that's what comes through in the End Men movie. And any snowboarder out there that hasn't seen this End Men movie, yeah. you need this is this is the reason that we're here at, at Donner today, but this is the reason we're all here, is that the community and the friendships and the 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 wherewithal to keep going, right? Like some people we saw the Dogtown uh we watched the Dogtown one after because uh, I don't think that um, there was someone that hadn't seen it. Was it Dogtown? What? They hadn't seen Dogtown, and you know, That's here's criminal. here's a funny, crazy <laughs> fact about the Lords of Dogtown documentary is that the very famous actor um, East Side and Down, Kenny, the guy who played Kenny Powers, he wasn't a, a famous actor yet. He actually did a lot of the zooms into the into the pictures and the pans. He, uh, Danny McBride is his name. He worked oh, really? on that, and he was like, "Oh God, damn it! They brought me like five thousand skateboard photos, and I had to zoom in and go side to side on this." And and once you see Dogtown, knowing that Danny McBride was the guy that did that, you're like, "Wow, they really did zoom in a lot on pictures when they were talking about shit for that action." But anyways, you guys were were not just you know what became the kind of power you, shit. Because you brought up Dogtown. Yep, yep. And what was cool for me, I watched Dogtown. I was in Florida, and I watched it with Caballero and Lance Mountain. 
in the theater, <laughs> you know. And and right after that, we were all going to Europe, and so it was really cool that we got to see that documentary before taking off. You know, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's it has become a shorthand for any action sports industry. We want to make the dog town of snowboarding. We want to make the dog town of surfing you know like you know and on that note since the end men thing has come yeah, out which yeah. is you know there's, there's parallels of the same time period yep things are going on and and i think there's a shout out to across the country and across the world that everybody has their similar story you know and and i i look forward to more stories coming out of each area just like when i when i think about the hall of fame stuff that Florida took upon themselves to start the Florida Skateboarding Hall of Fame, you know, to honor what's happening in their area. And basically, the whole start of this legend thing here at Donner, originally, uh, I was marketing director here 35 years ago. It's, so it's, it's always freaky for me to be in this building for the years and, and what's happened to me and what I've done on, in this building and on that mountain. Yes. It's, every time I come up here, it, it's emotional. But the start to this whole thing is we used to uh, honor the early days here at Donner. We had a vintage race. Uh, uh, Bryce Knights from San Francisco and uh, Thrasher and BK. A long dude. time. BK, yeah. BK was a big part of the early days, and Caitlin was a big part of that, that we would break out the vintage boards, you know, Jacoby was around and Kidwell come out, you know, and it was kind of a mini thing of what was happening now. But we didn't really have a uh, organizing group or anything, <laughs> just a group of friends. And I, I worked here, so I was able to set up pretty easily. But one night we were all drinking some beer and uh, Randy Caton goes, you know, every year we invite Chuck Barfoot, we bite Thompson's, we get Burton. And every year they gracefully decline. And so Randy goes, you know, if we honor them, they have to come. <laughs> and we went, whoa. And and that was the start of it. And so the very next year we said, hey, we are we came up with this Legend of Tahoe because I honestly would tell you that uh, on the territorial aspect, uh, Tahoe's been a very knit, close knit family, and I want to say because of USASA, which I, I used to run the what was called the NorCal Nevada Snowboard Series, and South Shore people were u used to coming up north, and we used to go down south, and that grew so big where we ended up developing two different uh, USASA regions. So there was always a real kind of tight knit, close knit of Tahoe, and all of us that were have been part of the snowboarding scene in Tahoe have an awareness of who's who the kingpins have been, who's contributed, who's out on, who's done well, you know, yeah. from the Palmers, the Kidwells, the Jacobies, the Roaches, you know, it, everybody yeah, is so cognizant just, of yeah, that. Yeah, and we always felt like, and I hate to say this because they're good friends of mine, but <laughs> Transworld snowboarding was like clueless <laughs> of what the hell is going on around Tahoe, you know. <laughs> And so with those kind of incentives, we actually said, man, let's start our own thing, just like Florida did with skateboarding. We're going to do our own legend of Tahoe snowboarding, we call it. Yep. And the first year, it was Chuck Barfoot, Tom Sims, and uh, Burton. You know, they were the honorees. Uh, and Tom and, and Chuck came here. They hadn't spoken in 30 years since they broke up the company, and, yep. uh, which is a whole other story. Totally. And it was a beautiful thing that these two longtime friends that hadn't spoken in years and years got it together here and went off on their own. You know, I can remember watching them from the deck going off. You know, like they could have gone in to, to, you know, kicking the shit out of each other, but <laughs> instead, you know, they, they ended up hugging and stuff. And then the next day, uh, they had a head to head race and, Blew everybody's minds when Chuck Barfoot beat Tom. Chuck uh, beat Tom. Chuck beat Tom in a head-to-head -head race on chair four. And, yeah, uh, Chucky. Yeah, exactly. Holy fuck! 
And that was a great weekend. I lived up here. Chuck stayed at my house, and Dave Weaver was with Chuck, and they were all, you know, so. And Weaver's here. Yeah. You know, so there, there's such a greatness of what developed from that first year to think how many years it has gone by. It's 19, right? And this we, is number 19. Which is insane, you that's, know. That's great. And we slowly, every year, uh, and it's kind of cool. We Mike and I, and beyond Mike, Tom Collins was a big part of this back then. There's a, a big group that really contributed to the growth of this, you know. And talking about that growth, Mike and I, and I'm sure Mike probably told you, we're ready to hand this off, you know, <laughs> past, past. past You've done batons. some of the largest standing sideways events in in the history of the world like we're talking x games was you were a founding developer of the x games is that a part of your yeah i I can honestly uh from the very first extreme games right like where there was shovel racing and all that shit (laughs) oh yeah so yeah i that's right i fucking love that didn't palmer do pretty good in the shovel race you know um I don't. I actually don't remember the Palmer did the show race. Okay, I, Lee I might Danzy. Be, yeah, Lee Danzy, and good uh, downhill loose friend, buddy of mine, world champ guy. Yeah, ex, and we we used to do all that. <laughs> what a character, Lee! I love you, buddy. But he shows up, and it, it, it's called the modif- modified shovel racing. That's what it was modified. And right, so yeah, right. we're we're at, we're at Snow Summit, the very first Winter <laughs> X Games, and. You know, ESPN is just looking for, you know, the craziest stuff out there. Yeah. And I guess there actually have been modified shovel racing events. Up to that and point. And I think there yeah. were, was a world championship even. Right. And I think the rules are pretty loose. But <laughs> Lee Dazzy shows up and uh, he, I think the rule was you had to have a shovel that touched the ground. The road on the ground. Not that it had any control over what you did. Right. Just that it was sliding along. Yeah. And as I remember, Lee got some this luggage rack for cars, but it was it was a nice fiberglass enclosed luggage rack, and he cut a hole out of it where his head could stick out like he was in a luge. <laughs> like his head stuck out the top and it, and it was aerodynamic because it was all in case. Oh my god! And I think he put it on top of a sled, and the shovel kind of coming and sticking out. Yeah, I fucking love it. So it's, that's it's crazy. interesting you bring that up because I can't so, help but think about Lee. And- do you remember when Sansalom won the Big Air? Was that the first year? That was the second or third year? It had already gotten going. Oh, uh, because I just want to tell you, at Mount Seymour, where I was riding a lot at oh, that Seymour. time. Yeah. Kevin was like a larger than life character who had already moved to Whistler. Uh, maybe he hadn't yet. He was just, he was like founder of the Seymour kids and he ripped, but there were a lot of, you know how it is. Like the kids are, are coming up and, and getting oh, yeah. better than, than the old guys. And he, I mean, we're talking about it. He was probably like 25 or 26, but Sansalone won the X games, big air. And then he won the West Beach Classic, which is our oh, mega event right up in Canada. And the way the story I remember was he was kind of he had he had lost his sponsorship with Santa Cruz or something. He was he was starting to age out at twenty seven or whatever, yeah. and he was starting <laughs> to think of other careers. But then once he won that X Games, it was that was it. He was a, a that that launched him on. He's still a, a lead guide at Baldface right now. He oh, stayed right. in the whole that's way, right. and he had pro models with option. He just he he went on to be one of Canada's greatest pros because winning the X Games at that point meant you got to shop around. You get to pick right, from right. multiple offers. And I think the X Games changed a lot of careers. It, oh, a lot it, of it had people, to have. You know? It would have had to have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, thinking back to that first X, and I I think a lot about Jim Rippy, you know, doing a backflip in in the middle of border cross, you know. <laughs> but uh, since we're talking about that, what I'm proud of is that at that first X Games, at that time, basically border cross was almost completely gone, mm-hmm. you know, and and ironically, it was weird that this. For the Olympics, they took on the discipline of border cross, 
but they didn't do it right. They ran it with four guys. Right, not the which six. Is, right. Okay, and the sixth thing. And so I, for me, it was great that I got to go to ESPN's look. This event is kick-ass. Swatch had a world tour that was kick-ass. Yep. You know, it's exciting for both the writers, and it you love watching it because people crash. Yep, yep. You know, it's racing. It's head-to-head. Head. It's, it's head. six people. It's motocross. And then, yeah, and Fist, I was going, what are you guys thinking? Four at a time and whatever. Yeah. And so I was able to go to ESPN. They basically said, what events, you know? And I'm stoked that I got to say, Border cross, slope style. If you notice, there's no GS, there's no slope. Right, right. You know, yeah. That that's what made the, the vibe of the thing yeah. current. It was yeah. a current yeah. event because it didn't have any heritage bullshit ski yeah. ba- stuff at and, first. And it was really crazy because basically, in snowboarding, I was really good at tight slalom. Because I was good at skateboard Skate slalom. slalom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you could have put a slalom event in there. Well, you know what? <laughs> when I think about slalom, a lot, a lot of the early guys in, in snowboarding, it used to be fun to put on the armor. Yeah. Because we had gate breakaway bashing. gates. Yeah, gate bashing. And uh, if you, you sound like you did too, because. You, if you had that I've, passion, I've hit a few. I've hit a few. There's there's yeah. a certain visual that you do when you're doing uh, breakaways as opposed to these little stubbies. Yeah, stubbies are great for GS because you're leaning to the turn as much. Yeah, but as far as slalom, I mean, I I, I I thought stubbies ruin slalom and slow morning. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's. Yeah. I, that, it's such an honor to talk to somebody yeah. that's had like it. I cannot overstate the impact that you've had on yeah. sideways standing sports yeah. because the visuals that brought us all into them were contests that were shot and that were on TV and that were creating these legendary people that you honor at this, at this event. This is the best yeah. event. I was just like yesterday uh, with both uh, with Sean, Sean and, uh, Nate and Nate, you know, <laughs> when I see them, whenever I see Sean, I, I talked about it yesterday. The first time I saw him was at Boreal. I think he was 13, 14, maybe. But it just went, oh my God, that's what snowboarding should be like, you know? And whenever I see him, I, I see the little kid. That's amazing. And, you know, and we have such a great relationship over the years because of going to the x games basically you know he uh, destroyed at x games oh yeah destroyed he crossed genres he ended the the skier snowboard war who's better fucking sean palmer is better (laughs) that's all there is to it it's not about skiing and snowboarding anymore it's like if if a snowboarder can go over i really felt that in my heart like if a snowboarder can win skier cross then yeah. snowboarding is better than skiing. It just is. You know, um, <laughs> since we're talking about all that and skiing, like I think I said earlier, I, I didn't start skiing until I was 21. I felt like I started late. And I, like basically I I was right during the hot dog days of Wayne Wong and people like that. And and I had I had to have the K2s that Wayne had with the, you know, red, white, and blue and all that. Sick. You know, and I went, I went from – 215s down to 190s and you know the whole short thing was happening so i totally. have a taste of skiing in, in me through that so later on the very first <laughs> winter x games they had they called them i think they were called ski skates yeah and it was like the dumbest thing <laughs> ever you know it was snowler blading that's snowler, what yeah. eventually it, we called it snowler blading and it was because they had inline skating in the summer, and they thought this this was like having inline. In and the it winter. was, yeah, it was. You know, yeah. And so we're we're at Copper Mountain, and free skiing is like slowly taking off around the country. Free skiing was this, you know, guys on skis that I don't want to snowboard, I want to ski, and I want to do all this stuff because yep. it was it's like the carry it was kind of a carry on from hot dog skiing, which really set the standard outside of 
the dance stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the dance really took oh, it down. God. But but when you have guys like Glenn Plake and Scott Schmidt yeah. doing sick shit in big free ride situations. Exactly. Holy crap. Yeah. 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 That's where we got our inspiration from. That's where, yeah. you know, free riding really started at Baker with that generation. You guys were, yeah. were here. The Tahoe City Dump was the most insane freestyle that was going on but it was two years ahead of everybody else um but holy crap if if you don't tilt your hat to scott and glenn oh yeah the, which and both of them are tahoe guys right yeah uh, i mean blake's been here plenty he used to come and uh, stay in the condos and stuff what, here here at donner what a guy what a, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah sick sick so he'd come to little donner little know? donner he could go anywhere he'd want you know? totally but back up my story, yeah. we're at Co- Copper Mountain, and there was a big meeting there, and because I had been kind of vocal to behind the scenes at ESPN about, you know, that there, hey, there's this thing going on with skiing. This this little blade shit's got to go, <laughs> you know, and actually, uh, oh wow, good for you, yeah. And actually, there's this big meeting, and they had uh, representatives of free skiers i think most guys are probably from colorado at the time because we're at copper yeah and uh chris gunnerson gunny gunny and i we walked in to this meeting and we sat down and they introduced us and all that and when i got up to talk and and i said you know i have a little bit of background skiing this and that and i've actually done the glm we used to ha- take glm if, if anybody knows where that graduated length method GLM. They used to have short skis to teach you how to ski on short skis. Oh. Then you went long skis. Yep. And this is all long before short skis. Totally. He says, so I actually know what it's like to sh- ski on short skis. And I said, it's, re- I said, I'm pretty sure I said it's fucking ridiculous because on real skis, you could go faster, higher, look way better. Totally. You know? And all the free skiers, and then you know, I got a lot of high fives. Of, like, I got, man, I don't know who you are, but you know. So I actually will say that I, uh, I think Gunny and I we spoke up that day, and that was the last year they had the skier skier blader thing, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and yeah. free skiing just took off, you know. And it was the same course. That was the thing. The exactly. X Games brought over skiers from the old way of thinking into being like fuck we kind of gotta do the the things that the snowboarders are doing are cooler they're better events they're more fun and, they're and more that's challenging the thing, like, props yeah. to espn yeah. they had an open mind to yep to listen to gunny yeah. yeah that's what i'm gonna yeah. say yeah yeah, yeah. And, well that's and where the, snowboarding influenced skiing right? exactly let's say yeah that's you i know, mean it's right there it's and at the time even, even you know the way the 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 free skiers were dressing and all, you know. Was, Same, still now. Yeah. The cool kids in yeah. the Seymour parking lot, the last time I went up, were all skiers. Yeah. I was like, wow, you guys are doing parking lot beers. You got the fucking baggy clothes. You and look like little hoodlums. There is now. Yeah. There, yeah. There, there's not as much. There's like kids can't even imagine. Why would you hate on a skier? Crews are like skiers, snowboarder, skiers, snowboarder on the lifts. Yeah. Like it's not. They they just don't have that. I don't. Where? Why were we so mad at skiers? I don't remember why. No, you why have we to were. think now. <laughs> skiers are pissed at snowboarders, right? So we it's just hated back. We we're mad at them. We we're just being. being we didn't who like we are. being we were hated. Just being who right. we are. We're right. Being youth with energy and stuff, and the comment I've hated over the years from skiers, and I have a lot of skier friends. And in fact, I even heard this w- w- within the last couple of weeks. Well, it's so loud. <laughs> you can hear them coming. Oh, and, and wow. it's like, get them. You can, you can hear a beginner it. skier yeah. coming too. Yeah. It's the same sound. But, you know, why can't we all get along? We're getting along. We're getting along great. fine yeah. now. We're getting along. But fine. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that free skiing, you know, uh, that had a part in that gunny and that free skiing took off. And then what's kind of cool is. In Park City, the year after they had the Olympics there, I got invited to organize the World Super Pie Championships Ooh, at Park City. And so for like five years, uh, I'd go to Park City 
And, you know, I, I, through Winter X Games and through doing the Dew Tour, Oh, wow. Snowboard. All, I did all the snowboarding events. I did do skiing. Holy but at shit. Park City, I got to do both snowboarding and skiing. So I got in with a lot of the top skiers because of the Park City thing. But And so there's a big crew out there. Shout out to Tom Zekas, who's carrying the torch, who's still at the Dew Tour and X Games. And Tom was a cross M team member oh, here. Damn. At and, and that's another Incredible. big part. The fact that Don, little Donner Ski Ranch, we had the Cross M Racing Team, uh, Mark Fawcett, you know. Killer. Hey, do you want to you want to weave a fabric of the snowboard, the quilt of the snowboard community right now? Mike Jacoby told me this morning that he recruited the Cross M Jerry Masterpool. Yeah, yeah. He was a coach for something else. He was a coach for he. Uh, we can just review the tape. Ski wise, yeah. He, he was a coach for something else, and Jacoby wanted to stay here. He wants to. He wanted to ride here, and so Burton was going to send him wherever the coaches were. But he recruited Masterpool. He's like, hey, ever think about maybe coaching snowboarding? And Jerry looked into it. And went shit. I would do that. And so then that's why it stayed here was because Jacoby didn't want to travel some other place. You know, those were insane times to think we had probably the best snowboard racers in the here, world at Little Donner. Donner Ski Ranch. Yeah, yeah. And they trained five days a week. Yeah. You know, midday they were here. And that's right. That's when I worked here. Fozzy, and, uh, Mark Fawcett, J Jeremy Jones, I yeah, would imagine. Uh, you know, like, yeah. who thinks about Jeremy as being a racer these days? Right, right. No, People don't know. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy yeah. was part of Cross M yep. and, and Zekas and Fuzzy. I mean, and I got to go out and train with those guys on occasion. And stuff oh, and, wow. Best and then dudes. hence, I, like, I took Master dudes. Pool. I was president of USASA, and we were back in uh, Minnesota. Whoa. And I had Jerry come out and be the technical guy for all that. That's amazing. Stuff. So it's it's funny how this little ski area with 650 feet of vertical, <laughs> you know, had world-class people going on for years and years. It's like Seymour. There are certain places where it's just good. It, the, the small, like if yeah. this was on Whistler, it would be a yeah. zone that everyone goes to. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't need... You don't need the top to bottom. Not everybody goes to Whistler, rides from the peak to the creek, and then back up the peak See, to the now, creek. Now you have me thinking, we did a, a, a Winter X Games at Whistler, but it was in the springtime because we're, I never knew how big Whistler was. It's massive. If you haven't been there, <laughs> it's so big. It's mind-blowing when you go there. But we actually had a, a Winter X Games on the top of the mountain while mountain biking was going on on the bottom of the mountain. Wow. And all the lifts, the mountain biking scene there at that time. Huge. Unbelievable, you know? Yeah, yeah what and, they were doing. And on that note, I was actually a, a National Off-Road Bike Association official. Oh, what? And I ran the uh, mountain bike series here. Holy shit, and Don. And competed, and yeah. And I brought it up the other day that... Uh, Sean Palmer was one of the top downhillers. Absolutely was. He did his first race on a downhill. It was one of my races here at Donner. Amazing. From top to bottom. And when Sean showed up in that morning, we're going, Sean, what are you doing? Oh, I ride bikes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Going to have some fun. You know, Sean just, yeah, have fun. Have some fun. And so I remember his first run, he's coming down. And I got guys on, you know, marshals on the course. And I hear on the radio, this guy is flying. <laughs> You know, and who is that? Oh, it's Sean. You know, kicked everybody's ass. You know, he had a pro career in, and then in downhill. Went, went on to be top guy at Specialized and stuff. And, right. And I used to uh, help officiate down at Mammoth at the big race there. And Sean be there. And everybody's got all their stuff. Sean's got one little van by himself. And everybody's at Sean's booth. Unreal. Yeah, Sean. Peace out to you, brother. Love you. The guy's the best. All right, well, let's let's end on. Yeah, you can pick one of these two questions. <laughs> okay, was there some like it's pretty easy? I would imagine to see Terrier come through. You're like, okay, this guy's gonna win. Yeah. This guy's winning. <laughs> um, were the were there people that were coming up that you were excited to watch? You're like, ooh, this guy in a couple of years is gonna be amazing. So, 
that that became that or or were there and, and then the other question you could choose between these two was it who was underrated like who didn't get the do that you saw that you're going fuck these judges are fucking up this guy is insane you know i uh i kind of heard a little bit with with jimmy when you were talking to him about the judging thing and all and you know that's that's a subject that could be talked about for forever you know, yeah yeah a long time and it's funny how often i as a contest director mm -hmm. have taken the blame for of what course. the judges have done yeah. because i'm the one you're the I, name i'm the one that would hire those judges you're the event organizer you know, yeah event and i would i'd get a lot of flack for why this and why that yeah and i will say probably 95 percent of the time I back the judges, back the judges. And, and what they're doing and the reason that they are judges. And if you've never been a judge, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's not. No, no it's no. hard. It's, it's a hard that, job. Dude. You should, you should, you know, step into those shoes. Right. Right. You know, right. And, and, uh, and there's a reason why you have five judges. Yep. You know? Yeah. 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 At the same point, I, when I first did my little soap style things here, I was the announcer and I was the judge. <laughs> I did everything, and if right. somebody had a beef, I said, no. <laughs> but, yeah, judging is a whole different thing. But getting back to who, I, over the years, there's so many people that I've seen that you just go, oh, my God. You know, uh, I think of one guy, that, again, that came to, to this area. I think of Jason Borgstead from Alaska. Wow. Uh, Jason came down here, and Jason... Uh, Certain guys, certain guys in snowboarding have have a, have a goal. Yep. And it's not that they want to be world champion, but they want to be the best that they can be. And if it fits into that mold of being world champion, and the one of the first kids I seen that look is Mike Jacoby. You know, because uh, Mike. As a teenager around here, around Donner, Mike's always been a good sized guy, but always impressive writer. But I could see in Mike's eyes, I could tell he wanted to impress me. And from there, wanted to impress the world because Mike, Mike and people similar to him, if you don't have that drive, that, that, that inner competitive thing, you know, Mike had that very strong and Mike, will tell you I'm I'm gonna win, I'm gonna beat you, whatever. I've I've I got tons of stories about that. Yeah. And then you have Palmer this Palmer or Chris Roach that are just you know, yeah, I'm just gonna have fun. But that's inside they're going, I'm kicking down. You know, there's there's totally, that. And and totally. you gotta love that about those guys, you know. But I do think of uh Roach the Roach brothers, Tucker Franson, they're such a huge degree of talent coming out of little grass, grass valley. valley hell yeah yeah just a huge the passages yeah yeah both Fran of them. tucker france and yeah. uh, just it goes on and on yeah devin you know? ryerson yeah there, there's a exactly. bunch exactly there's a you know? bunch of really good riders yeah. out of and then grass valley i have to bring up dave sioni oh shit i forgot you know? Cioni. dave yeah. sioni uh there's an era of Sioni where he was just he's top billed in snowboarders and exile. You know, like I think yeah. a lot of or, people or Western oh, that's Front. a filmmaker guy. Right, right, right. right. He yeah. was so successful yeah. as a filmmaker, it yeah. almost overshadows the fact that he was one of the best snowboarders yeah, in the world exactly. for for yeah. a part of an era. Yeah. Uh there's a guy named uh not too well known, uh but around tall guy named uh, Sean Goulard. Yeah. And uh, there's some photos that Bud has of absolute contortionists you know which back then was tweak tweaking airs was <laughs> yeah tweaking was, you know how tweaking and this guy was unbelievable and then you know as i'm saying that name and you you think about style in the air and all that you know damian saunders <laughs> unbelievable you know the best and hard boots <laughs> in hard boots you know? flipping the palisades here yeah and for fun you got the hard boot guys like we we have uh avalanche snowboards when they came out with tom burke jim zellers bonnie zellers yeah you know 
their approach on hard boots was really interesting. Yeah. And to this day, Tom Burke, you know, he, he, he looks, he's amazing coming down. He's, anything, a, he's a cat. You know? And those guys are always like that. So yeah. we always had this talent around this area, which again gets back to, we want to honor our own talent around Tahoe because we, we felt like we weren't getting our due out outside air i i got that's what this is kind of grown grown into i gotta say it don and now you've noticed we've expanded you know yep to up north to the baker you know baker bay and we've had a lot of people come uh from utah and colorado it's gonna keep getting bigger yeah i just need to say you started by saying your original um goal in life and what you thought was that you were going to be a rock star and i can't <laughs> think of a bigger rock star in snowboarding and skateboarding than don bostick you're a fucking rock wow. star dude yeah straight up thank you thank you for everything you've done right on. it's thank incredible you. i just feel i've been blessed that's it yeah well yeah. you've you may you took the opportunities and you ran with it so and that's great you know, the only thing i'd like to add to all that is uh uh a uh, shout out to my wife. Got to have a woman behind you or with you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. That was right so sick. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just started shouting out my wife now because, you know, I'm so casual in these conversations. Sometimes yeah. I'd, I would drop a dumb thing about my you know like oh yeah we got in a dumb fight or something and then and she would listen to the show then she'd hear that she'd be like you're such an asshole you never say that i'm (laughs) and even doing this now it's it makes it sound like she's whiny she's not i wouldn't be here without my wife i couldn't get here without that support i'd be a completely different person somewhere in a ditch you know what's funny is yeah uh, you said you watched the anime movie i did yeah Uh, during that time i was married to a a different lady for yeah. 10 years yeah. that went through when I had the skate shop and all when I had that skate shop if I wasn't at the shop I was off skating somewhere with these kids yeah you know and I ended up my wife and I we ended up going to counseling and I'm going what for <laughs> everything's great right and then we'd go to these counseling and she just go Rah! yeah <laughs> and I'd go yeah. I didn't know because I'm just having the time of my life. Enjoying myself like crazy. And so every now and then I say, you know, I'm probably the first guy I'd have to go to counseling because of skateboarding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's epic. Yeah. Thanks, Don. Thank you. That was amazing. F and Rad shout outs this week to N Men, Godfather, Don Bostic, and all the park builders, event managers, and resort operation people who make stuff like Holy Bully, the X Games, the Dark Park, the Side Cut Rope Toe, and all our community snowboarding events happen. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, we just crossed the $200 a month line. If you've been thinking about joining, why not take the time today? Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.